Hi everyone. Sermon number five, if you want to read along. Now for the scripture reading, we're going to be in the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter six, picking up where we left, uh, last left off. Uh, verse 25, reading to the end of the chapter. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. This is the word of God for the people of God. Can any one of you... By worrying, add a single hour to your life. Jesus uh, might be wrong about that. Uh, you know, maybe six months ago, I was, I was having trouble sleeping one night. And, and, and like most things that keep us up at night, you know, it was a situation I couldn't change anything about that night. I couldn't change anything right then and there. I, I couldn't change anything by worrying. But that didn't matter. Right? I, I couldn't help but worry anyways. And I know we've all been there before. But, uh, but so since I couldn't get it off my mind and I couldn't fall asleep, I eventually I got up and I started pacing in the hallway back and forth, back and forth, again and again and again, you know, at times praying to God, other times mumbling to myself, you know, trying to talk through it, uh, while also trying to forget about it which you know, doesn't exactly work in tandem, does it? Jesus says, do not worry. But it's like, does he even realize how hard it is to not worry? Like Jesus honestly seems a bit naive here. Uh, Jesus also says, you can't add to your lifespan by worrying. Well, tell that to my Fitbit. Right? Over 3,000 steps in the middle of the night, and, and doctors say exercise is good for you. Uh, so, hmm. But, uh, you know, they also say sleep's good for you, so maybe no hours were added, just a few hours of restful sleep lost. Okay, so, you know, I guess Jesus might be right about that hour thing, but uh, I have other issues with what Jesus says here. So let's dig in. In uh, this portion of the sermon, Jesus starts off by telling us to not worry about our lives. Uh, in particular, don't worry about what we will eat or drink or wear, because life is more than food, right? And the body is more than clothes, yes? But, like... While life is more than food and clothes, it, it, it also definitely still involves food and clothes, right? Unless you're a nudist, but you still got the food. But, but anyway, life is food plus clothing plus work and responsibilities and relationships and, and driving and ice cream and a whole bunch of other things. Uh, but, but, but food and clothing made the list. Meaning we cannot just ignore food and clothing, right? We need to concern ourselves with producing or acquiring our food and our clothing. Right? If no one concerns themselves with, with uh, growing the food, then 
Who's going to do it? Uh, so I guess the issue I have here, uh, I have here with what Jesus says is that it's not, it's not entirely clear. Like what, what exactly does he mean by worry? Uh, does he mean don't think about? Does he mean don't concern ourselves with? And if he does, then he's even more naive than I originally gave him credit. Uh, but, but so then, uh, from there, Jesus, he goes on to teach about birds, right? Birds do not sow or reap, nor do they build barns to store away food. Uh, and, and I imagine J uh, Jewish Rabbi Jesus, he's, he's pointing at birds flying overhead. He's like, look at the birds of the air. They float with ease because they aren't weighed down by worries. And then, and then I also... Uh, I also like to imagine a different Jesus. We'll call him, you know, show off Jesus. And, and he flings his hands out dramatically. And he's like, look at the birds. And then there's a puff of white smoke and, and 20 doves fly up into the air. But, but so Jesus, whether it's show off Jesus or rabbi Jesus, whichever Jesus, uh, Jesus tells us about how lazy birds are. He's like, they don't sow, they don't reap. They don't build barns or take out the trash when you tell them to, and yet they get enough to eat, don't they? God takes care of them. God feeds them. And, and since you are so much more valuable than birds, but uh, Jesus, I am not, I'm not a bird. Right? Birds don't have to cook their worms. They eat them raw. But me, I can't just eat raw chicken, and I refuse to eat raw broccoli. Uh, and, and birds, while, while they work a little for their food, you know, flying around and, and looking and hunting and swooping and all that, well, well you see, the nice thing about worms is there's, there's plenty of them. Right? There are plenty of worms and berry bushes and, and fries dropped on the boardwalk and whatever else birds eat. But for us... We won't just stumble upon naturally generating fields and farms and fry buckets. We have to think about what we do. We have to plan out what we grow and where we grow it. We have to, to each take on different roles in our households and societies in order to collectively survive and thrive. And, and Jesus, you know, look at the birds of the air. See how they fly south for winter? You know, only some of our retirees can do that. And, and the rest of us, well, we're, we're a bit more like squirrels, right? We have cabinets and pantries and fridges where we store up our food so that we don't starve in the barren months. Now, now either Jesus is super naive here, or, you know, maybe Jesus is not saying, hey, just go be like a bird. Right? Jesus is not saying, fly around and enjoy life without a care in the world. No need to lift a single feather today to ensure you have food on your table tomorrow. Tomorrow, just wake up, take a look around, and see what delicious food God has delivered to your front yard. Right? Jesus, he, uh, he's not saying that. But, but, but so if he's not saying that, then what is Jesus saying? Right? What is Jesus getting at? Now next, after Jesus warns us that worrying won't add any time, you'll, you'll just lose time, well, he goes on to try out another illustration. And this time it's about fields and flowers. He's like, there's no need to worry about clothes either. After all, just look at the grassy meadows. See how their flowers grow? Rabbi Jesus Rabbi Jesus, he draws the crowd's attention to a nice flower patch on the hillside while show off Jesus. He, he draws the crowd's attention to himself doing spirit fingers while making the flower patch bloom in that moment. But, but so again, Jesus, he, he points out the laziness of nature. He's like the fields and their flowers do not labor or spin. And yet not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. Now, now, on the one hand, it's like Jesus is saying, don't bother dressing up. You're going to look like trash anyways next to that field of flowers. Counterpoint. 
who wore it better. Yeah. But uh, that's not even my main issue with what Jesus says here. Uh, my main issue is that Jesus says we are more valuable to God than tufts of grass. But, uh, you know, if I am more valuable, then why doesn't God make me better dressed? Checkmate. But so uh, Jesus claims that God will clothe us much more because of our value. And I'm guessing Jesus is talking here about our robes of righteousness. But, but to focus in on that, I think, would cause us to miss the main point. So, so let's get back to the, the palpable tension here, which is simply that we are not dirt. Right? We might have been created from the dirt, and we might one day be temporarily returning to the dust, but, but we are not dirt fields. Right? Those fields do absolutely nothing. They just sit there, and God clothes them in grass and flowers. But imagine if all of us, right, the whole human race, imagine if we all just sat on our hands and, and did nothing, right? Like, like not only would no new clothes be made, but, but even the already existing clothes on us would, the already existing clothes would go unused, unworn. Uh, God might dress the, the fields the way we dress our toddlers, but God doesn't dress us that way. And so again, we need to ask, well, what is Jesus saying? What is he trying to get at? Well, um, at this point, Jesus is, is confident he has made his point clearly. So he, he wraps up this particular teaching. Therefore, do not worry. Do not worry about what you will eat or drink or wear. That's what the pagans do. And we don't want to be like them, do we? Right? They, they run around worrying about and chasing after those things. Show off, Jesus snaps his fingers, and, and over the crest of the hill runs a pig, followed soon after by a Roman soldier trying to nab it with his spear. All kidding aside, um, I'll point out that unlike the birds and the flowers, Jesus does not tell us that we are more important than the pagans, or, or more valuable than the pagans, a.k.a. our fellow human beings. But uh, the, the reason Jesus calls out the pagans here is because they have different gods. And so they are believing a different story, a different reality. But Jesus reminds us that we believe in Yahweh, our Heavenly Father who knows what we need, who, who knows that we need food and clothing, and like any good father, he will make sure we get what we need. And here comes the kicker. Jesus says, instead. Instead. As in, instead of running after food and clothing and whatnot, instead, seek first his, your Heavenly Father's, kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Jesus commands us, his disciples, to seek the kingdom first. First, right? Not only, but first. As in, priority should be the, uh, pri our priority should be the kingdom of God. Jesus is saying we should prioritize God and his kingdom over earthly treasures such as money, and we should prioritize righteousness such as genuine giving and prayer and fasting, prioritizing it over reputation and resume building. And then in his finale, he tells us that tomorrow will worry about itself, as in Hey, deal with whatever you face today and then go get some good sleep so that you can face better, uh, so that you can better face whatever trouble may come tomorrow. But okay, okay, so we've wrestled a little with the tension inherent in his teaching, you know, the potential naivety of Jesus. Jesus talks about birds, but their situation is very different from ours. Jesus points to the fields and flowers, but again, we can't fully relate. And, and while we wish we could eliminate worry from our lives, it's easier said than done. And, it, and it's not like 
it's hurting anyone, right? You know, maybe hurting us, just maybe, maybe we lose a few hours of sleep, but it's not hurting anyone else, right? Unless, what if we're wrong about that? What if our worry is hurting other people? A Bankstown mother and daughter have been charged after a fight over toilet paper in Woolworths. The vision of the shoppers arguing with another woman went viral as supermarkets impose new purchase limits to curb coronavirus hysteria. The fight over toilet paper that went viral around the world. I just want one pack. No, not one pack. Now the 60-year-old mother and her 23-year-old daughter who were wheeling a trolley full of rolls at Woolworths Chalora have been charged with a fray and are due in court next month. I cannot understand the logic. Uh, we have a big factory in Penrith that produces toilet paper. Investigators spoke to the other woman, a 49-year-old, who'd allegedly been assaulted but she wasn't injured. The incident, one of several at Australian supermarkets, as desperation for toilet paper reaches irrational levels. Everybody please stay calm and be rational. We have everything we need. For the second time in a week, Woolworths and Coles have been forced to crack down on the number of toilet paper packs allowed to be purchased. At Woolies, customers are now limited to just two. But here at Coles, it's down to just one per person. We have asked our suppliers to focus on increasing production of larger pack sizes. A pack of 30 rolls should last an average family for around three weeks. We can all get enough toilet paper if we all calm down a little bit. Hannah Sinclair, Nine News. In the previous portion of Jesus' sermon, uh, he mentioned how we can have either good, healthy, generous eyes or bad, unhealthy, stingy eyes. Uh, the healthy eyes is about seeing the world through the eyes of the birds and the fields where we trust in God's abundant provision. With those eyes, our whole body and life is filled with good light. With those eyes, we are free to love other people because we don't feel the instinctually selfish need to, to look after our own selves. But when we have those unhealthy eyes, well, that's when we see the world through a scarcity lens. When, when, we, when we look out at our world, we see scarcity, not abundance. We see limitation, shortage, competition, and a need to push others down in order for us to come out on top. And just like we've noticed with this entire teaching on worry by Jesus, there's a whole lot of tension there. There's tension because in many ways our current world is full of scarcity and competitions and, and haves and have-nots. Not everyone can get the job or promotion they want. Not everyone can afford the house they want or even afford any house at all. Some people can't even afford to feed their families. And so most of us feel like we have to worry because if we stop worrying, then we'll lose sight of what we need and, and then we'll inevitably miss out on getting it because we stopped paying attention and stopped plotting and planning and working to get it. And yeah, I, I don't know what to tell you. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you and say, well, that's not part of our rely reality. Like it definitely is. But, but at the same time, the tension here is that we are Jesus's disciples. Right? We are his students of life, and this is how he is telling us to live, without worry. And so either we have to be bad, disobedient disciples, or we need to learn how to live without this worry to live without these bad eyes, to live without this unhealthy worldview, to live without this scarcity mindset. And if we don't learn how to do that, 
Well, then this fear and insecurity, it will keep governing the way we treat one another. When we worry about the wrong things, or, or, or even when we worry about the right things, but we worry about them in the wrong way, or at the wrong time, or in the wrong order, or with the wrong intensity. When we worry wrong, it roots its way deep inside of us, and, and it makes us self-centered, and self-absorbed, and selfish, and, and then it starts affecting how we treat others, and it starts infecting our hearts. It, it poisons us and, and poisons our interactions and our relationships, and it makes us wrestle one another over toilet paper. Toilet paper. Now, if that's what happens in a community that believes the toilet paper supply is low, well, imagine what happens in communities that believe food and clothing is scarce. What would people be willing to do to one another if their own survival was at stake? And so Jesus confronts and combats this worldview of worry and this mindset of me. Do, do not worry about these things that you need for survival, he says. He says, still, still concern yourselves with them, but, but do not fall into worrying. Worrying leads nowhere good. Instead, I want you to look at nature and to be reminded of the goodness of God. Bolster your faith in our Heavenly Father and, and His desire to see you prosper. Take confidence in His goodness and in the goodness of His creation and trust in the story that God is telling to our world. Trust in grace and and forgiveness, and resurrection, uh, trust in God's ultimate victory at the end of the story. Because trust is the antithesis of fear. And we do this. Right? We do this, we, we build this trust, and we fight this fear by seriously pursuing the Lord in prayer. We take our fears and, and our insecurities and our, and our worries and we take them all to God and we place them in his hands and then we let go and we let him transform our hearts while we do so. And, and, and we fight fear by seeking first his kingdom through acts of righteousness and, and we fight fear by reminding ourselves that the worst, the worst that can happen to us will one day be less to us than a shadow. And above all else, we fight fear and worry by remembering... We can all get enough toilet paper if we all calm down a little bit. Pastor Tim Fry, Wesley News. <laughs>